So obviously a big win for us. Again, New Mexico State, this is our fifth win in a row. Um, you know, we didn't, we, didn't, we didn't play our A game during that game, but, uh, you know, we, we found a way to win, so that's huge. Um, you know, we did something that hasn't been done here in, in 32 years, which, which means a lot of, to us to be able to, you know, accomplish that for, for our fans, not only ourselves, uh, but the, but the, you know definitely the people that support us. Uh, so, you know it, it was a big win. Uh, you know getting ready for the bowl game, just an exciting feeling. Uh, you will be out of here next week on Tuesday. So, you know just talking with the guys around the locker room and stuff like that. I mean we just ready to go, ready to go, ready to go have some fun, ready to do the team activities, um, and, and and enjoy our times in in in, uh, in Boise, and then obviously. Uh, get ready for the game, play Ohio, and, uh, you know, see if we can get a win, another one. Did you get a chance to watch Ohio on Friday? Yeah, I watched them Friday night against Northern Illinois. It was a good game. It was a good game. Um, I, didn't get, I didn't get to see their defense a whole lot because, uh, you know, most of that game, Northern Illinois just seemed like they couldn't keep the ball, you know, and I'm an offensive guy, so I want to see, I want to see defense. And, uh, you know, Northern Illinois had a lot of turnovers. They, you know, seemed like, you know, they had a lot of fumbles and interceptions and stuff like that during the game. So didn't really get to see Ohio's defense a whole lot until the end. And, you know, that's when, that, you know, they were mostly passing the ball because they were coming back and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, maybe we can take advantage there. I don't know. But we have the film. I'll watch it and, and uh, get an evaluation. What's up? To, to think that teams know you're going to run the ball and you still run for about 400 yards in a game, what, is, what does that say to you and to, and to this team, do you think? It's just, uh, you know, we got a lot of tough-minded guys uh, as a running back crew and as an offensive line. And it's tough to run the ball against teams that know you're going to run the ball. Usually when, when somebody knows exactly what you're going to do, you don't have a lot of success doing it. Uh, but for us to still has have success, just uh, it just says that, you know it's a credit to our hard work that we put in in practice. Uh, you know it says a lot to uh, the identity that we want to have, being a running football team. We want to have that identity, and uh, you know we, we kind of have the mindset that it doesn't matter who we play, uh, and, and, and you know whether or not they know we're going to run the ball or not, we we still want to have success running the football. We feel like that's where you know uh, our you know our strongest assets are, our strongest players. You know, myself, Michael Smith, and and Kerwin. We can do a lot of different things out of the backfield, and uh, you know we're also leaders of this football team. So uh, you know we want to be able to run the ball and, and open some things up for other guys to be able to make plays. And it seems like uh, is it, are they gearing so much for you to run the ball that when they do throw it to you on a couple of these times you're. Just so why oh, is it because they don't expect him to do that or, or what do you think because of all the emphasis that are run? Yeah, I think you know a lot of times those those little you know throwback plays or wide open plays come off of uh, come off of play action or or quick pass and you know they they're not going to expect uh, you know I don't think defenses expect us to uh, we haven't really caught the ball out of the backfield of uh, you know as much this year as as in past years so. You know, sometimes we're able to sneak out behind the defenses and, and, and leak out and get some wide open plays. But once we get the play action and, and you know, they kind of come up from the run and then they don't see we have the ball, then instantly defense is like, okay, where are they going to throw? Where are the receivers at? we got to get in our zones. But you're forgetting about the running back. And we, we can sneak out there and, uh, and make some plays. And I think the running game definitely helps that. Besides the game next week, what team activity are you most looking forward to? I've seen what the list is. So what do you look forward to? I've only heard of two things that we're doing. We're going bowling, I think, the first day, and I think uh, there's a, the next day we're going sledding or something like that. You know, I'm not a big fan of the snow that much, so I'm kind of, you know, I want to, I want to bowl. I went bowling in a while, see if I can get over 200 again. You know, get my stroke going on. Me and Bobby will probably be competing a little bit, you know, because he got a little bowling game himself. So, you know, we'll all compete. We'll all compete, and we'll, we'll see who comes out on top at the end of that bowling tournament. <laughs> you guys have uh, you you've won the five straight games. This is something new. You you the, the way you've gotten there, of course, is really interesting and all. Mm -hmm. and, but but the 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 thing is now you have accomplished and got goal. How do you 
keep the same kind of edge rather than a celebration edge to keep it really business and, mm -hmm. and going up there and taking care of things the right way. What, what are you going to say or what are you going to do to your mind and, and other guys on the team about well, that? Well, we still haven't accomplished what we wanted to accomplish yet. And that's to win a, win, a, win a championship game, win a bowl game. That still hasn't been done yet. So, so the motivation and the edge is still going to be there because, yes, it, it, it's exciting and it's going to be fun to, to uh, be out in Boise for a week and do the fun activities. But, uh, but, the, but the plan and the goal is still to win the bowl game. You know, when we get a ring, we want that ring to say champions on that. You know, we want to be champions of a, of a, of a championship game. And that still hasn't been done yet. And that's still what we're trying to accomplish, not only for ourselves, but, you know, for our coaches and definitely for our fans. You know what I mean? So that, that, knowing that as a team will definitely help us, you know, keep our edge and keep us, you know, on, on, on our toes, you know, ready for this game, getting ready for this game. How much of a factor will the uh, closeness of the bowl game to Logan be for you guys? And then um, you know, also knowing that the fans will travel for this game. Yeah, the, it, it, it'll be huge because, you know, I'm not sure how far Boise is from here. I think it's like four hours. But, you know, I've heard a lot of people, you know, saying that they're they're hopping in their cars and they're driving up to the game. And that, that'll definitely be an advantage for us because, you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of fans in the stands. And I don't, know how, I don't know if it'll necessarily be like a home field advantage, but um, it'll, it'll definitely, you know, Put, put us at an advantage if, if uh, you know, having a lot of fans up there. Um, you know, defense is on the field. That's a time for the fans to be able to get loud. And, and uh, you know, if we can have a double-digit number of 1,000 fans up there, if that even makes any sense, what I just said. But if we get a lot of fans up there, you know, in the, in the thousands, and they get loud and help our defense out, you know, that, that, that'll, be a, that'll help us a lot on the field. How much of a difference where you've had experience played on the blue turf does that make for you? and for the other players on the team that have had that experience before? I don't think it, it puts us at an advantage. Um, we've played on there before, but, you know, a field is a field. I don't know how Ohio will respond to it. I think they'll be fine. Uh, what I heard was we're going to wear our blue jerseys, but, you know, I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. You know, it's just a field. It's blue, so it's a little bit different. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it's just a football field. They'll be ready to play. Describe the feeling of getting off the airplane with all the fans there to greet you, and what that was like. Something that you're not really accustomed to. Here. Yeah, no, that was that was amazing. Um, you know, I was talking about it, talking about it. You know, like after it happened, and you know, you you see that kind of stuff on TV. You you, you last year you you saw Cam Newton and all those fans, the Auburn fans, and they're standing there, kind of like a tunnel, and all the players are walking through that tunnel. We even saw it when we went to Idaho. You know, during there, they showed up on the bus. They, you know, they had fans on both sides. You know, right before they walk into the facility, they got the cheerleaders there. You know, the band was out there, and they, you know, they're walking through this tunnel. Uh, you know, right before they, you know, walk into the locker room to get dressed, and those you you see those kind of things, and you're like, man, you know, I wish I can be a part of something like that because, uh, I mean, that 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 stuff's fun, uh, and it's just an amazing feeling to have that support. Uh, you know, from your fans be able to do that kind of stuff. And when they were there, I mean, uh, all the guys were just, I mean, excited. Uh, they were they were thankful, and, and, and it just shows you the kind of fans that we have here in Logan. You know, it's out there, it's cold, it's late. They got kids that way past their bedtime, and, uh, you know, they still want to be out there trying to get an autograph. You know, it's just it just shows you what kind of fans, what kind of dedicated fans that we have here in Logan. And that, like I mentioned before, some of the best fans in the world. So we'll see him at the bowl game. A lot of phone calls Saturday after game regarding your plans for next year. Can you tell us right now what your thought process and timetable might be, or have you thought about it very much? Or? Yeah, you know, I'm supposed to meet with Coach Anderson actually uh, sometime this afternoon. Uh, I've talked to my dad briefly about it. He knows that uh, my focus is Ohio. He knows that uh, my focus is still this football team and and this coaching staff and these fans and, and trying to get it done. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have plenty of time to, to evaluate and make that decision. Uh, you know, my, my decision is going to be heavily, heavily based on uh, my family and their situation. Um, and are they in need of, uh, of, a, of a better situation? 
And uh, if so, uh, if, if, if the best thing for me to do is to leave so that I can put them in a better situation, then I'll do that. Uh, but, you know, if I can stay another year in college and, uh, you know, there's nothing like this experience. You, you grow close with these teammates. Uh, you grow close with these fans and these coaches. It's less business-like. You, you know, you have a lot of fun. So, you know, it's harder than you think just, you know, to say, I'm going to pack my things and go. So um, hopefully I'll have a decision made, you know, sometime close to the bowl game or, you know, after. You know what kind of feedback you're going to get? Or is that what you're going to find out this afternoon? What's that? You know what kind of feedback you'll get from, like, the scouts and the NFL? Is that what you're going to find out this afternoon? No, no, no. I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to Coach A strictly about, um, you know, what, what, you my, yeah, what should I do? my family situation and what's going on. I'll, I'll, I'll let him in on, on, on those kind of things just so he knows as a, as a head coach what's going on with his players. He said he indicated on the coaching show the other night that you have to, in your situation, then you'd have to let the NFL know you're interested. Mm -hmm. And then they would start to let you know back yeah. uh, where you might sit or what they think or all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So you might have a little bit, even after the bowl game, you might have a little bit of time where you could even evaluate things. Ex too. Exactly, exactly. So, there, there, I mean, there's still a lot of time. Uh, for me to make a decision, I, and I didn't even know that. You know that when I sit down with him this afternoon, he'll like, he'll explain all that kind of stuff to me, how the process goes, what kind of paperwork has to be submitted, and and stuff like that, and then we'll go from there. But right now, you know, I want to beat Ohio, get a championship ring. We talked about that uh, championship ring, and uh, kind of made a proclamation about bringing it home to mm -hmm. the fans at the basketball game mm -hmm. the other night. Just talk about, uh, you know, does that add a little bit more motivation or weight on your shoulders or just something you're trying to to bring some more excitement to the Yeah, program? maybe I shouldn't have said that because, I, you know, I usually don't guarantee anything. But, uh, you know, I, I said that because I'm confident. And uh, I'm confident in this team. And, you know, I feel I feel these fans deserve it more than any, any fans in the, in, the, in the country of college football. Uh, you know, and, and I know this team will work hard and we'll do everything we can uh, to bring home a trophy just for these fans, you know, not only for ourselves, but just for these fans. Uh, you know, I want to and I want them to be confident in us too. And that was, you know, part of the reason why, part of the reason why I said that. And, uh, you know, if we lose, you know, I'm an idiot. Uh, I look like, <laughs> I look like an idiot, but, but, but if we win, I don't. And I'm willing to take that. I'm willing to take that risk. One of the reasons you've wanted to, wanted to come to Utah State in the first place was to make a big difference like mm -hmm. this, and and I think for a lot of older Aggie fans, the 1997 season and the 1993 seasons are probably some of their fonder memories. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you to leave an impact like that on this program? It means a lot because it was the only thing that I ever wanted to do. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. When I stepped on this campus, I didn't care about you know records and you know breaking other running back records and touchdowns and, and rushing yards and stuff like that. I said, the one thing that I wanted to do, the, and DeAndre and I came at the same time, DeAndre Burrow was the quarterback the last four seasons here, was to turn this program into a winning program. That's it. You know, make, make, make four and eight seasons eight and four. Make three and nine seasons nine and three. I, I, that, that's all I wanted to do because uh, these fans deserve it. This team deserve it. And I felt like, you know, when I came here that, you know, I wouldn't be the savior or anything like that, but I can make a huge impact on making those seasons winning seasons. That when we started winning, I wanted to be uh, a huge part of that. And uh, to be able to do it this season and, and go through the struggles that we had earlier in the season and, and flip it and turn it around and get ourselves to a bowl game means a lot because – um, I didn't do it by myself, but I was able to contribute somehow uh, and to, to getting this team to a winning record, and that and that means more to me than than any record or anything like that that I, that I've ever broken. Now it's uh, not for official release yet, so you can't tweet it or <laughs> anything like that. But Bobby, uh, don't be tweeting. <laughs> We're about to find out. Down. <laughs> but uh, Robert Turbin was the WAC Offensive Player of the Year. It will be for a uh, official release here in about a half hour or so. So uh, he'll make a uh, statement on that, and then uh, take a few questions on that if you'd like. So, yeah, <laughs> I 
Um, yeah, being WAC Player of the Year, WAC Offensive Player of the Year is just, uh, I mean, it's just another blessing. Um, just, you know, words, words can't really describe the feeling. It's just a, just a great honor to be a part of that, to be recognized as that, you know. I still kind of feel like I could have had a, you know, did some, did some, did some other things. There's some stuff I could have done better. There's some, there's some games that, uh, you know, not necessarily I wish I had back, but, uh, where, you know, where I, you know, could have done some better things or whatnot, but, uh, but still to be, uh, you know, noticed and, you know, have that honor is just, uh, is just, you know, a very grateful feeling for me. And that's, that's coaches who decide that. So that's got to make really feel good too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that just shows the, the, the respect that I have for me and I respect every coach in this league and, you know, for them to see me, you know, as a as a guy respectable enough to be the offense. I mean, there's a lot of offensive players that play it, a lot of good ones too, and uh, to put me at the top just just means a lot. I know you've had a lot of personal goals. Was this one of the goals you set in mind for yourself, or did you even worry about it? Well, you know, the the the, the one main goal that I set is, is is to be the best. You know, you always got to play the game uh, to be the best, and to be the best, you know, you got to win. And uh, we've been able to do that as a team. Um, and, you know, to be the best, you got to be noticed as one of the best, you know, offensive player of the year and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I guess you can say it was a goal. Who would you work alongside yourself? Uh, man, that's a good question. Because, um, you know, I don't really watch offense a whole lot. But, uh, you know, and I, and I don't want to be biased. And, and, you know, say somebody on my team. But that kid at Fresno State, Robbie Rouse, that running back, is a, is a pretty good running back. He's a, he's a, he's a, he makes a lot of plays. I watched a little bit of uh, his highlights and stuff like that. And, you know, if anybody else could have got it, I think, I think uh, he, he'd be well-deserving of it. He has 1.5 yards more a game than you do on average. And I guarantee how many more carries does he give me on average, yeah. too. He's you even look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, last, you know, last year you had, you had the major knee surgery, you missed the season. Yeah. What does that say about your, your work ethic to come back and have a season like this and and be at a hundred more carries? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it proves my point. Come back but, and have a season like this and win an award like this the the following year. Yeah. Um, it, it's really not even. It's really a credit to the people that helped me out, the people that were there for me. You know, the, really the credit goes to. You know, Dr. Higginbotham, who did the surgery. And then the credit goes to Lori Olson, who's the physical therapist here on campus. And then the credit goes to Coach Evan Simon, who's the, the head strength coach, who I trained with for over a year coming back from the knee. And those guys just didn't allow me to fail. You know, those are the, you know, those are, there, there were times where, you know, where there were bad days and I could have easily said, well, this is, uh, this is not going to work. My knee's never going to be back. It's never going to, the flexibility's not going to get there. And it was tough, and it was a struggle. But but those guys kept me headstrong. And even Bobby, you know, every time I talked to Bobby, like, you know, my head was down. And he's like, man, you just got you got to keep working. You know, and then that's just a credit to my teammates and my coaches. They all just kept me headstrong. And, uh, you know, if anything, they deserve the, the, you know, the credit because uh, they didn't allow me to not work hard. You're going to be back, and you're going to play, and you're going to be better than you were in 2009. Um, and those are the things that they that that, that they, you know, that they, they told me. And uh, we're sitting here, and uh, you know, I've done some, been able to do some good things because of them, because of their help. Um, I last game against New Mexico State. Like I said, we like to keep the crowd on the edge of their seats. Uh, nah, you know we didn't we didn't come out, you know as we didn't play as well as we should have. Um, but at the end of the day, we still got the win, and you know the W is what counts. Um, so you know it's definitely something we can go over and watch film and learn from, and you know make sure we make it better by the bowl game. You know because we got a lot of time. Um, you know the bowl game against Ohio. You know I watched them a little bit um, while we were. Um, waiting for the New Mexico State game, so um, the offense is pretty, pretty good. I'm excited to play them. I can't wait to play them. You know, I'm excited to be in, the, you know, first bowl game we had in quite a time. Like it's been a couple of years, 
since we had a bowl game, so I'm excited to play in it. And, uh, you know, I'm just excited for all the events that's going to take place. Tell us about your bowling game. Huh? Your bowling game. My bowling game? That Robert was talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I like to throw a couple strikes here and there, you know. Like I said, you know, it doesn't matter how pretty it is as long as you come out with the W. So that's my motto. What can you say about Robert being offensive player of the year in the WAC? And I know you two are close. So. Mm, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely happy for him. I think they... They picked the right guy with that one. Um, you know, he been through a lot, especially through you know injuries. It had it had been a couple of days where you know he came to me and he was just like, you know, I don't know if my knee will ever be the same. And you know, you just gotta, you know, keep up with it. You know, keep doing the training and the, the treatment, and you're gonna be right by seasons coming. You know, he came out balled out, and I'm extremely happy for him. I know you were the front runner for the defensive player of the year. Disappointed that it didn't come out your way? No, I'm not disappointed. We got seven wins. We're about to get eight. Haven't had eight in a long time either. So, you know, I'm not worried about that. Did, uh, did you, you know, played so long here and, and defensively. Was it just the obvious increase in some talent on the defensive side that made the difference and how the defense could make plays this year that it could make other years or do you think that the guys did have a different mindset that have been here before to even make some of that happen Bobby how do you explain that on defense um I think it was a little bit of both I think um previous years our D-line hasn't been as great as it could be you know I definitely feel like this D-line has improved a lot you know because they work hard and, you know, I think everybody works hard, and we worked hard. And I think, you know, our mindset changed throughout the summer. You know, everybody started believing in, in each other. And, you know, when everybody believes in the same goal, you know, special things happen. So I think that's what happened. Because, I mean, other years you guys have worked in the off season, and you talk that you're going to go to a bowl game and all those things, and it didn't mm -hmm. happen. The, 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 was there... Anything during the season that was different, did you feel like? Or, I mean, just uh, obviously when you lose some games and you didn't turn the other direction on those losses and things like that? I think the belief in each other is probably probably was stronger than it was last year. Um, you know, I felt like uh, we had a lot of times this year where we could have just, you know, gave up and quit, but everybody believed in each other and, you know, stayed positive and kept everybody's minds on the right track and, you know, we sitting where we sitting now. Kyle uh, Gallagher, WAC Player of the Week. Talk about his performance on Saturday, including the two interceptions. Well, the near interception <laughs> and the one at the goal line. Oh man, Kyle, I'm happy for him too, man. He deserves it. Uh, he played really well, especially with you know his hand being the way it is. So I definitely feel like if he had two hands, he would have caught the the second one. But you know, at the end of the day, he caught the one that counted. You know, we was back, we was backed up. You know, they was about to score, and he picks the ball off. So, you know, more proud to him. I mean, Kyle's a great player. I enjoy playing with him. You know, I got one more game with him, and, you know, I can't wait to play. That's That first one he picked off was probably the harder of the two. Yeah, de yeah, definitely, because I don't know how he does it. He just comes out and makes plays with that cast on. So, you know, I tell him every day that, you know, you a man for doing all that. So, <laughs> you know, shout out to Kyle. Talk about um, what's gone into the defense the last two games. Um, kind of stepping up big weight in games, making big stops. Seems like you guys are getting plays from all sorts of different players. Yeah. I think everybody's just excited to make plays. You know, it's they're not looking for one player to make plays. They look, they trying to be the guy to make plays, and I think that's the difference. Everybody want to be that guy that makes plays, and you know, it's starting to show. Looking ahead to Ohio, I don't know how much you've been able to watch them, but uh, they have a quarterback who's pretty mobile in Tettleton. Have you, what film have you seen on them, and and what? Uh, it seems a little bit with uh, you know Matt Christian and uh, you know Riley Nelson earlier in the year. The mobile quarterbacks have sometimes caused problems for the defense. How do you uh, contain him, and what do you look for going into this game against Ohio? Um, I haven't really got to watch that much film on him. Uh, you know, like I said, all I seen was uh, New Mexico State while we were sitting there in the hotel. But 
you know, when they jumped up, what, 20 to 7 or something like that, he was clicking, he was doing everything he had to do. Um, so it's going to be a challenge to, to stop him, and I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, we have struggled against mobile quarterbacks, but, you know, that's the past. This is the present. So, you know, I look forward to trying to stop him. What's your, just your general overall feelings of how you're going to get yourself even more ready for this one last ultimate game for Utah State in your career and stuff? Um, I will be ready. I ain't going to do nothing different. This is my last game as an Aggie. This is our first bowl game in a while, so if I can't get myself amped up for this game, I shouldn't be playing football. So I'll be ready come December 17th. Played about as many snaps as anybody on the team. What does it mean to you to leave this kind of an impact on the program? Um, it feels great to be a part of, you know, helping turn this program around. Um, you know, we've been through a lot, especially me. Like I said, you know, coaches changes and, you know, the ups and the downs. But, you know, uh, it's good to be part of something special. So, you know, I'm just happy to be a part of that. Talk about uh, the opportunity to play in Boise, fairly close to Logan, have a lot of fans there, and what that will mean to you guys to, to have some fan support for this game. I mean, a lot, because like, like Terp said, you know, it's a lot of people hitting us up saying they already bought their tickets, ready to come down and uh, watch the game. So, you know, having that fan support is going to be great. Um, I don't know how many people Ohio will bring in, but I know we're going to have more fans because our fans are pretty loyal and we got the be best fans in Utah. So, um, you know, I'm just excited to see how many people show up, and I can't wait to perform one last time in front of them. Okay, uh, you know, first of all, in the game, not a surprise the way it uh, went down, obviously, from the way the season's gone, but uh, also because we were playing a very good football team, and uh, a football team that was obviously in their, their last game of the year, and I thought Dwayne and his staff uh, had them prepared, and, and uh, have they, as they have been all year long, were uh, a well-prepared football team that I thought played very hard, and uh, obviously it went down to the last moments. I thought our kids were um, ready to play. A lot of distractions through the week, no matter how hard we talked about them. Or these kids are in uh, uncharted water. It's very foreign territory for them to, you know, uh, just be in the spot that they're in. And it's a great spot to be in, but it is something that, you know, we discussed. And I felt like we did not, by any stretch of the imagination, play our best game. Um, I thought our effort was good. I thought there was uh, times when we could take advantage of scenarios that we didn't take advantage of, and uh, typically we've taken advantage of some of those, and uh, but we didn't, and to the credit for that goes to, to New Mexico State. But it was a tremendous win. Uh, you know, made, got the stops on defense when we had to. Uh, offense did a great job again of running the ball down there, got it back with five minutes and change again on the clock and drove it all the way down the field. and. Ran the ball almost every single snap, made a couple of critical plays when they had to, and then obviously Matt made a, a tremendous play, and Adam threw a tremendous ball to him, and uh, Matt, it's hard to defend when you throw him a good ball in that spot, and we were able to make the play, and then Nevin did a great job of, uh, Bojay did a tremendous job on that play of three-man rush getting it pulled up in that spot. You know, a lot of times that goes unnoticed, but he did a great job of getting that thing pulled up and put it in a spot for the quarterback had to throw it up, and Nevin made a great play. So tremendous, tremendous victory uh, to get to seven was was uh, you know it's a milestone again. It's another step in in uh, in the right direction. Um, it was great to see him be able to you know win on the road again, um, handle adversity again, and uh, it's not the easiest place in the world to go in and play, which we which we all know. So proud of him for that. Uh, just my hat goes off to these young men again, and it's it's great to be able to have a team meeting and be able to go play again and have an opportunity to start preparing. So uh, the bowl game, we'll, you know, we'll start preparation today. I believe we are a, a mentally and uh, a physically beat-up football team, and we need a day off. So um, I had originally scheduled to do some things with them today, and I will not. They will be off. Uh, we'll have a team meeting. We'll have our champions meeting. Uh, they'll have their victory meal, which they always have, and they'll get a lift in. And that's what the kids will do today. And uh, they do need some time to focus on the academics with the finals coming their way early now or 
at least a, a schedule that is not what they anticipated uh, with the timing of the bowl. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that going tomorrow as far as preparation goes. We'll get them back in here tomorrow morning and, and start our preparation for Ohio. A lot of the coaches are out on the road recruiting. Most of the coaches are out on the road recruiting. Uh, there's only three or four of us here, so we have a watered-down staff. But uh, we'll be ready to go to get a start on, uh, on and very happy to be able to, to start uh, moving towards the, the bowl game. I uh, don't know one thing about them. I have not seen them other than on TV, and I will at some point, but it's probably not going to be until about 7 or 8 or 9 o'clock tonight by the time I have a chance to sit down and watch them. So, uh, you know, I know I know absolutely nothing about them yet, except I know they're going to be well-coached, tough-minded, tremendous head coach. Uh, anybody that uh, follows college football is well aware of, of uh, his past and what he's been able to do as, as a head football coach is uh, uh, very special. Uh, you know, Coach Bush has a relationship with them because of the Nebraska ties. So uh, it'll be a, a very good football team we're playing. They're used to going to bowl games. They're used to winning. So it'll be a tremendous challenge for us, and we're excited about the opportunity to start preparing. Uh, Robert Turbin, great honor. <clears throat> Well-deserved, in my opinion. Uh, had a tremendous year. Great to see a kid go through the adversity he had to go through to come back and and uh, be a, a conference player of the year is is a, is a great accomplishment and uh, very very proud of him very happy for Robert. Uh, uh, first thing Robert's going to do is tell him that uh, everybody that was the people around him that got it for him and uh, which he should because he had a supporting cast around him that did a tremendous job of blocking, giving him creating the holes. But he is a tremendous talent and. Uh, it's just it's it's special to see. Uh, there's a lot of special stories on this team. Uh, there's many many of them, and he's one of them. And I'm I'm glad to see him uh, get rewarded. Um, the, you just mentioned that finals are supposed to be next week. Mm -hmm. Will you do you have to get with different classes? Like, how do you handle that with a whole bunch of guys having to get their finals done before you take off to Boise? Well, J T. Thomas will do a tremendous job of getting that organized, and some of the finals will take place up there. Some of them will take place early. Um, some of them will take place regularly scheduled. So it's uh, it's a good headache to have to be able to get yourself prepared for a bowl game, and there's a lot of scrambling going on right now to, to make sure that we get the kids taken care of, number one, which is always the most important part of this program, and we will. We'll give them an opportunity to, to excel in the classroom like we expect them to, but uh, there's there's a lot of... A lot of stuff that has to go on for that to take place. So, but JT uh, will do a great job, and you know the provost is involved in helping us just to make sure that we do it the right way and get them organized. And you know, so it's it's a team effort, but it'll get handled. How big of a play was Kyle on the goal line with that interception? That was that was a big play. You know, it was hey, the way he made it too. He kind of had to go through the backside and kind of backdoor it to get there. And uh, you know, Kyle Gallagher is, is he's he's far away this week. It's it's he's his last. Three or four games. This last game was a tremendous game for him, and you know, obviously, he's player of the week and uh, well deserved, in my opinion. But boy, has he's been really uh, a key part about the last four or five games as we've got on this run of just playing consistent. But that was a huge play uh, for us. Obviously, it uh, took points off the board. It was another red zone stop for this defense to come out with zero points is, is big, and you know, right before the half, it was huge. So, but uh, he's. He made four or five of those. You know, you go back a couple of games ago and you look back at the San Jose game, he poked the ball out of there a couple of times, and he's been all over the place, and he plays the game with uh, with an aggressive attitude, and now he's getting himself to the right spot most of the times. Coach, so many close games, 10 out of 12, uh, going down to the wire. Has this team's composure changed as you've gone through this process through the season? Yeah, yeah, no, no question. Uh, it's wild to say, but I, you know I, they're comfortable, uh, and, and it's uh, they they don't uh, you know they don't flinch. And, and we talked about that at the beginning of the year. It was kind of a model that we used, but boy, I never thought it'd come down to you know ten of the twelve games that uh, to be that close. And and the ones we didn't win, you know, I don't look back. We just didn't make a play, and you know, we didn't. It's not like we got starry eyed. I think they've learned. Um, you know how to finish, but it, that's an easy statement to say when you win. You know, it's how yeah we're making the plays and, and we are, and we didn't make the plays before, and that's really, that's how simple it is with this team. Uh, 
it was never that I don't think they believed. It was never I felt I never felt like this team walked into the fourth quarter and said, "Gosh, these guys are pushing us around." And you know, uh, I made the statement in the Colorado State game. I thought we wore down. Did I think the kids made that statement? No, but I felt that as a head coach. It's the only time I felt that the whole season, and that was a long game in double overtime. Um, but uh, they've definitely grown and they've matured as they've gone through it. And it's 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 fun to watch them make plays that uh, they dream about making. You know, kids dream, and Matt Austin's dream his for probably the last 15 years of life of making a play at the end of the game on a jump ball and a fade in the back of the end zone. That's what that's what wide receivers want. And he's done it twice. It's uh, it's unbelievable. You know, Adam Kennedy's throwing that ball into the garbage can probably 100 times every week, and he doesn't think about hitting the garbage can. He thinks about winning the game every time he throws that ball, and it's paid off. So special, special, special moments for a special group of kids. Matt Austin in particular, midway in the season, you could tell he was a little bit like not being played so much. Mm -hmm. He's he's definitely turned it around this last half of the season. His situation. Yeah, I think. Well, I think the biggest thing with Matt is you know, we made a, a real conscious effort, and uh, about the midway point, whenever it may have been, to you know use use the downfield ball down the field. I mean, we wanted to get the ball down the field into that second and third intermediate zone, and um, you know. There was a, a trust and a, uh, a feeling between, really, especially between Adam and uh, Matt, I believe, as we've gone forward the last three or four weeks that, you know, throw me the ball, I'll catch it. And uh, I believe that started in Hawaii, and it just kind of has triggered through there, and it's been it's become contagious. So, And, you know, with, when Chucky was in that situation, we didn't take as many shots. We weren't moving the ball down the field nearly as much. And so I don't think Chucky was in those positions where we were behind, where we had to start slinging it around. And it was very different. So it was it's a different offense for a lot of different reasons, but uh, uh, that's dictated by where you're at in the football game. But uh, Matt has been a very physical blocker all year long. Again, a tremendous story. Been told he couldn't play twice, not just once, but his foot was shattered, and you, know, you can't come back if that was a wide receiver. Well, yes, I can. I'll show you, and he did, and uh, blows a patella, patella tendon right after that, the first, what, quarter of the Oklahoma game. You know, the kid never comes back from that, and yes, he does. So uh, it's it's just another one of those special stories that you know you never, as a head coach, you'll never forget this season, I promise you, because of all those special kids. Bobby said he wasn't disappointed by not being defensive player of the year. I mean, <laughs> he's what are disappointed. Your on that? He's disappointed. Yeah, he, you know, Bobby's such a competitor that it'll, you know, he, he says the right things, and that's fine. And you know, the, the other young man's a great player. I've watched him for three years in this league, and he's 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 well deserving. So it, it is what it is, and and uh, but that's something Bobby wanted. Uh, Bobby's going to play football for a long, long time, and. It's uh, we talk about it all the time to get, whether it's preseason, whether it's postseason, whenever it may be. It's it's great for young men to be able to uh, have accomplishments, and Bobby will he'll be well rewarded for the season before it's all over with. I think we all know that, and you know there's there's other young men in this conference that didn't get it to think that they were you know possibly the defensive player of the year too. So, you know, my hat goes off to to all those kids that were. And even on the ballots, to, to be in that position is, is special. So, you know, congratulations to all of them. And, uh, and Bobby will be disappointed. I'm sure he's a little disappointed, but uh, he'll, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Do we know anybody? Yeah, we had a first uh, total of six all whack honorees doubling our uh, whack high, and that's our most all conference honor since 2003 when we had seven Big West. Tyler Larson, Philip Napoloo, Robert Turbin, Bobby Wagner on the first team. Second team is Taryn Lloyd and Levi Costco. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll absorb it when I look at it and sit down and see it. But again, there's the, they'll have two or three other polls, and a lot of other kids will get recognized. So I think it's a, uh, you know, it's the second place team in the league. So no matter how you cut it, I mean, you can say what you want, but we're the second place team in the league, and uh, they should have some all all conference kids uh, on that team, and we do have some all conference kids on the team, and this is a. This is a very good conference with some very, very talented young men. I mean, it was tough for me when I sit back and fill out the ballot, and, and uh, you know, I try to really make sure that I do it right when I fill out the ballot. I don't talk to any other coaches about it as far as other head coaches, and, you know, I don't, I don't do that stuff. What I do is I sit down and I talk to my coaches because they're the ones that spend the time 
uh, scouting the most of the opponent that they're playing, and they have the best knowledge base of who are the best players and who they most who they respect the most. And that's how I believe in doing it as a head coach. So uh, I'm sure it's all the other head coaches do it the same way. So it's very fair. And you know, some guys play better against other people too, so they got a little bit better feel of of uh, you know where they sit and, and how they uh, how it all pans out. But it's it's uh, it's all good. It's uh, it's a conference honor, and uh, some other kids will get honored as we move forward. Can you talk about the input that Thermo will give the pros? Yeah, um, you know it'll be it's a process. First of all, we'll we'll fill in the paperwork, and Robert will want to turn it in. We've already discussed that, and in which he should. At that point, my understanding of it is I'm not an NFL guy by any stretch of the imagination. Is as they they take it, he's in. Uh, the uh, league office asks several different teams. I don't have an exact number how many teams it is to basically evaluate him, and uh, they'll sit back and they'll evaluate him as if he was a senior, and see where they think he fits in as, as a draft choice. And then my understanding again is that then it comes back to us and they say, well, we think he's this round or this is where we believe he'll be able to go. And then at that point, the ball is in, in Robert's uh, court. Um, I'm simply here as nothing more than an educator on that on that situation for Robert. Um, I will help him make the decision. Um, I will not, in any way, shape, or form, tell him what to do. I believe it's a lot like a a young man when he's making a decision to to go to college. And when we recruit kids, I think it's very similar to you're making a decision that's going to change your life. But the difference is, is Robert's not 18 years old. So Robert knows how to make a decision. Um, all we can do is help him. And I have to make sure that the people that are uh, trying to influence his life are the people that should be influencing his life, if you will. So there's a, it uh, it gets it can get a little shady out there, and my job is to protect him also in this process to make sure that he's surrounded by the right people. Do you? I hate to put it down, Rob. Do you have any comments on Pat Hill getting fired today yeah. and Steve Fairchild, two coaches that beat you yep. this year? Yep. Yep. Um, you know, I I don't know uh, Coach Fairchild real well, but. Uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for for his teams, and it's 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 always hard. It's it's a very difficult situation, a difficult scenario, and uh, really the only time I spent with him uh, was was before the game. And you know, he's he's a great guy, and he's a good coach. He'll uh, it's a tough deal. I don't know what else to say other than that on that one. Um, Pat, yeah, Pat, Pat Hill. You have those ties with yep. Ron and things. Yep. Like that. It, you know, it, it's it's hard to sit back, and I think it's 15 years, and all I can say is. Fresno State football is where they are today because of Pat Hill, and nobody can deny that. So that's that's the bottom line. And uh, what he's brought there, the attitude, um, the toughness, the you know the, the way his teams play, uh, he's he's taken them to a level that uh, is is high. And they've had some great coaches there. Coach Sweeney was there. I mean, it's not like he you know walked into a place they hadn't won before, but to do it for 15 years is special. And to be where they are is the environment of college football has changed drastically since he became the coach 15 years ago. I mean, it changes every year, but 15 years is a long time to, to have a tenure as a head coach anywhere, as we all know. But uh, he's, a, he's a very, very good coach. And if he wants to coach, um, for a, a coach to do uh, at any point, and I'm sure that, uh, but Pat Hill will be very successful, and, and so will Steve Fairchild. If they both continue to want to coach, they'll they'll be just they'll they'll be just fine. So what's Brady's status? You know, he got a shoulder. I don't know for sure. Um, wouldn't be able to to go today. But uh, my uh, what I've learned so far is I believe he'll be back. So I think he'll be in the mix this next uh, next week in practice limited and then hopefully by the time we get to Boise he'll be more active in practice and then be ready to go. You thought maybe Walter could maybe get back in the Yeah, Walt, Walter might be back a little bit, which would be awesome for Walter to be able to come back and play for uh, to get in a bowl game for his senior year and uh, it, it, we'll see. We'll see how he progresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We'll move some kids around and do what we have to be able to do to survive back there, but uh, it's uh, you know, everybody has the injuries at this point of the year, but hopefully they can come back. Just And, you know, it would be great for the football team, yes, but, boy, it would be sure nice to see Walter be able to play for his senior year in, in a bowl game, and uh, that would be special for him. And, you know, Chris Harris is is coming in and, and his senior year playing in spots that, uh, you know, he, he's dreamt of playing in too. So we'll be fine. They'll go out and they'll, they'll play hard, whoever's out there for us, and we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And probably be right there with 30 seconds left one way or the other. So who knows what's going to happen. Hey, Coach, when you left New Mexico, did you anticipate or know anything about fans showing up to the airport to greet you and then maybe describe that feeling where yep. you, you get 
get the program to the point where fans are coming to the airport? To yep. The well, you know, uh, in in the world that we live in, with uh, the Twitter and the emails, and everything else that's out there, word can spread quickly. Um, but it was just, you know, it was spearheaded. Um, obviously, when when we were when we were getting ready to leave, and by a lot of Aggie, faithful, faithful Aggies that wanted to do something special for the kids. Um, I got a little bit of uh, enlightenment before we took off that uh, there may be something there when we got back. And and boy, but uh, you, if you could have been in the, we pulled in. A quick story on it, okay? So we pull in, and and our pilot is, you know, he's a pretty aggressive pilot, wasn't he? I mean, he got after it. Now he was, you know, we're going, we're going, and we're landing, we're landing. There's no real gray area, but uh, so and he got on the intercom and was like, okay, you know, there's some people here to meet you and greet you, and so uh, at that point I had a little bit of an idea, but that stirred the kids up. They turned around, and looked around, and then you saw, I mean, they were it was on the fence and. Smoke was coming out of their, you know, from their breath and all over the place. And then they, you didn't know how many people were there. So I texted my kids and I said, you know, where are you at? They, of course, they didn't want to tell me they were there because they'd heard about it too. And they're like, oh, we're just hanging out at home and da da da. da. So then we pull up. They open up the doors and it's all the way to the all the way to the front doors, all the way through the lobby, all the way out the back door, and all the way to the buses. And the picture of Michael Smith, he's the first one out, basically, that was in the paper, that says it all. I mean, I've never seen Michael Smith doesn't smile a lot. He's such a serious kid, but, man, it was, it was, it was ear-to-ear smiles out of him, and, and then it just it just filtered back into the back of the plane, and it was like, you can believe how many people are out here. And it was it was a pretty special moment for those kids. And so thank you to everybody that did that, and, and that's, that's thank you is not enough. That's. Uh, it, 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 it changes it just changes the mentality I mean it really does to have that many people care that much about a situation it's big anything else your thoughts and feelings about seven wins and something that hasn't been you know accomplished in a number of years and and you know what what goes into that and then um, you know what, what is your feeling about trying to do this in the future and the same type of thing yep well you know the this, the seven wins is uh, it's tremendous, and it's even more dramatic because of the way they came. Um, you know, when we were sitting way back when at uh, two and five, and halftime of the Hawaii game, I mean, that's that's where the whole thing flipped. No matter, that's that's going to be a special moment for a long, long time. That second half of the Hawaii game, because if we don't find a way to come back and win that one, it's going to be you know even tougher to do what we've done. But uh, it, it's. Uh, it, all the it when you when you go through a process so many times and you don't get the results that you talk about it's hard to keep doing it and that's where you know kids get they get to that point i believe and and it's human nature so you know after 3 years you come back and you win 4 games you win 4 games you feel like you're getting better um feel like the team is tougher they're not rewarded with a whole bunch of more wins but they're 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 competing at a higher level and i think they were gaining momentum every year so they remain fresh now to be able to do it and and reach out and put your arms around a bowl game and reach out and put your arms around a winning season for the future it's huge because they can walk back in and they say it works you know it's uh it's it's uh it's there for us and we know if we do things the right way we you know we talk about how to finish games, how to make plays, have the toughness, all the things that we, we talk about. Um, we were so close for so many times and didn't get it done. But now that it's happened, it's something that you could, it, it validates them as players. It, it validates them as when they walk into the situation as we've been here before, guys. And I think it also creates an expectation level for the players, young and old, to be able to understand that this is the level that we're going to hold ourselves accountable to. And, you know, I tell them all the time, I said, you know, we want to talk about leaders and leaders are this and leaders are that. And, you know, real simple, if you're going to be a leader, all you're going to do is, is you know, you're going to set a standard and you're going to make sure that you and everybody around you uh, is held to that standard. And, and I think that's what this team did. You know, they, they said it. They said we're going to keep fighting. didn't always go their way. But uh, they demanded that they practice hard every day. They demanded that they were on time. You know, they demanded that they did everything they could to, to, to do good in the classroom. And that's, I think that will become contagious and help us as we move forward. Uh, number one, you know that'll that'll get me a whole bunch of emails from mad ex players today. I promise you, but uh, <laughs> they'll they'll take their shots uh, in a good way. But it it is absolutely the it's the most dramatic. It's the most uh, rewarding. 
year that I've had as a coach. I mean, it's not. It's there, there's there's no other way to even. It's not even close. And <laughs> a lot of the ways because of the dramatic fashion. But to, just to see the kids that. It, you, when they haven't had the success, and I talked to Dwayne Walker a little bit about this before our game, and you know he's fighting to do the exact same thing. And but to be able to, and I talked to Rob about it too, about you know the possibility of getting there because we weren't there yet when we were at Idaho. But to see the kids that haven't had a bowl game, that haven't had a winning season, and have busted their tails so hard to actually reach out and grab it, it's it's uh, it's real rewarding, and it's you know it's it's fun to see. No, no question about it. It's, it's, a, it's a great experience, and it's, I wake up every day with feeling pretty good about things.